Well, finally, some backup on this frozen planet. Um, aren't you with the Empire? Heh, <laughs> I'm with whoever has the most alcohol, so come on, boy, show me where the bar is. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today we're taking a look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series 40th Anniversary Empire Strikes Back Vintage Carded Retro Collection, whatever you want to call it, Lando and Rebel Soldier. Hoth! It's a rainy day, and I have new Star Wars figures. Does it get any better than this? Now, I got these from Dorkside Toys. Instead of getting the whole assortment right off the bat, for some reason, they got in full cases of both Lando and Rebel Soldier. I don't know how Hasbro bro works it's a mystery but these two well besides the uh luke in snow speeder gear these were the two i was looking most forward to because of lando's new photo real face and then the rebel soldier is just an all-new figure gimme gimme looking at the cards this is supposed to replicate that look from back in the late 70s early 80s that <laughs> we've all seen before but of course they're scaled up for the bigger scale of this line now it's not perfect they shift things stop moving they shift things around a little bit to accommodate the added weight of the figure how it's packaged you know but it's close enough it definitely gives me that ooh. I'm a kid again, Phil. On the back, essentially the rest of the wave, like I said, it's Luke and Snowspeeder, who is an all-new sculpt. I'm gonna need that one too. But then there's Dagobah R2-D2, which I don't need because I don't care for the sculpt. And then the Imperial TIE Fighter pilot. 40th anniversary, and then all your warnings, all your languages, don't put them in your mouth. So let's take a look at Lando first, because this is essentially the figure we already have with some embellishment on the head. I know that's everybody's favorite part. You can't lie to me. You have a hard candy shell cape that goes... Oh, there was some plastic in there. Just keep it separated. And comparing it to the old one, which one's the old one? You can't tell, can you? This is the new one. The gold may be just a slightly different shade of shimmer. Other than that, it's exactly the same. And then there's the figure itself. The original version of this figure... It had the misfortune of being one of the last before photo reel, so it didn't get that look to the head. So Hasbro's coming around on the 40th anniversary and <laughs> using this opportunity to upgrade the head a bit. Body-wise, again, just like the cape, there's not a lot of difference here. Maybe just slightly more matte. It's not as shiny as the original. Lando broke his arm. Come forward. The big draw here is the head. The old one, which needed no pointing out whatsoever, it had the painted eyes, eyebrows, and mustache, which mm, is not the greatest in the world. On the new one, we get the photo real, much more realistic eyes, more natural eyebrows and mustache, the lip color's better, and the skin tones don't match exactly between the neck and the face. The photo real faces on the Star Wars line lately have been shiny, so I may take some dull coat, try to knock that down, see what it looks like. Comes with the exact same blaster, and then also the exact same communicator with the nice gold up at the top. Hmm, I have something stuck to the hip. Kind of like glue and cardboard. Most of it's scratched away, but I'll have to clean that up later. Like I said, same exact figure, and I've already done a review of this, so if you want to see articulation or detail, you can go see that right there. Hopefully that's going to be right there. But then there's also the skiff guard Lando who did have the photo reel. And there you can see that it's a little bit more natural. Again, I think it's because of the matte look to the skin tone. Oh, and I'm gonna need two or 15 of these, I think. There's just something about troop builders. Yes, I prefer stormtroopers and all their armor and they all match and you get a group of them and they look awesome, but it's nice to finally get some rebel soldiers too. I mean, just look at all the detail here. You have this thingy up here, which I'm sure people will tell me what it is. And then these things, uh, go ahead and comment what those are too. And then this emblem with the grays and the red and the blue, but you have this sculpted quilted detail down here at the lower arm. And that carries on down to around the knees too. Too. It's just a nice, nice look. And the cool thing about that, they've taken the joints and sculpted into those too. And it's the same thing here on this elbow hinge. But even the plainer parts like the pants, the coat hanging all the way down to here on the back, very nice wrinkles. It's nicely detailed. It's not boring, you know? There's more of that quilting up here on the shoulder. The backpack has nice kibble all over it too. Who knows what these things are? There's, you know, volume control for the speakers. Down here's a vent to, for the coffee inside. 
you know, so the steam doesn't build up and fog everything up. The antenna to get FM radio. Down here, the techie detail on the glove, the self-destruct, you know, it, it counts down in the wrong numbers and Arnold runs from you. Nice pouch punched in right here, the silver of the buckle. I'm going to remove the backpack just for the sake of articulation and everything. That's pegged in with a square hole, well, a square-ish hole. This front overlay piece comes around and gives it a look that it is strapped on. The side does the same thing, so it looks like part of the figure, not just something hanging on a figure. But again, we're gonna take this off for now. There's the quilted detail coming across. I mean, even without the backpack, there's detail under. You still have these things sticking out if you wanna go backpackless, but from the front, you'll never know. There's your Hoth boots with the straps coming around, very Hothy. And then up at the head, I don't know if this is meant to look like any one trooper. It does seem to match the dude in the picture on the front of the package though. But it's nice and generic, I guess you could say. If you wanted to put several of these in a group, it'd be okay to have this face on here. And I say that <laughs> before going over accessories. We'll get to that. It's photo reeled, realistic. It even has some rosiness to the cheeks, like he's been out in the cold wind or something. Then there's the hat with the piece of cloth coming around, hanging down. It's got another tech detail over here on the other side. That's where he keeps his garage door opener, apparently. And I just like the overall look. But can I take this moment right here to say, I'd like to see a fan channel release of this with the brown coat and the brown boots, just like the vintage look. It didn't match the card back. Hell, I don't even know if it matched anybody in the actual movie, but it has that vintage feel. Hell, I may have to get an extra, do some painting or something. Going over articulation, there is a ball joint going up into the head and then a ball joint at the bottom of the neck, but he's got a lot of stuff going on up at the head, so looking up, not, not great, but not bad. Can look down, tilt, swivel. There is a butterfly joint hidden under this overlay. It does get in the way a little bit from the front, but has nice back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. On the outside of that, hinge and swivel coming up to there, swivels around, hinge and swivel at the elbow, it's a little bit tight, but it does come up past 90, and then rotation, hinge and swivel at the wrist, trigger finger, so it goes up and down, very nice, ball joint at the lower torso, let's see what's under here, good range for hula hooping, it comes down that, eh, it doesn't get in the way, get your bib back on, there you go, the lower jacket piece though, it's not stiff, and it is split right here, you can see how soft that is, but the holster hangs down to here and then plugs into the leg. So even though there's ball joints at the hips, you try to bring this up and it's a little bit restricted. It kind of bunches up on you. But even then, comes up to here, back, out, all the way. Again, bunching up, if you go the other way, it's not restricted, it goes through the split. There is a swivel at the thigh, double knee, I haven't tried this yet, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, kicks his hothy ass. Boop, 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 boop. Hinge at the ankle goes, well, all the way back. Eh, not bad forward. Then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he comes with this standard issue blaster. It, we've seen this several times before, but this time around it's cast in just gray plastic. The one that comes with Lando in the same set has the silver paint on it, a little darker black. But it fits in his hand beautifully, really. I mean, look at that trigger finger. And then it even slips down into this holster on the leg. Then there is also this rifle, and yeah, I dig this. In Battlefront, this was my main weapon. <laughs> Nice tight grip on that. The left hand is hinged up and down, so yeah, look at this. Oh man, oh man, oh man, that is awesome. Oh, and even that, that's okay, I'm good with that. Pew, 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 pew. And then we get up to the head, and it's head accessories. There's a pair of green lensed goggles with an elastic strap on it. Not the most fun to put on, but you can put that over the top. You can either have it sitting up on the hat, or you can bring it down over put it over his eyes. Just like that, that's cool. There's knots in the elastic right here that kind of stick out, but not bad. And then of course you can always have it just down around his neck. But then there's also this piece. It's kind of a plastic bandana. It's it's a little bit soft. For that, you pop the head off. You can either put it like this, which isn't the easiest to do. You gotta try to pop it in and it kind of stretches the plastic a little bit, but that's not terrible. Or you can turn it upside down and it becomes kind of a face mask. Again, not bad at all and a different look. There's just all kinds of different options here. Bandana up, bandana down, goggles up, down, on, wherever. But to give us even more options, Hasbro, <laughs> this is a genius move. Here's the backpack. There's a secret compartment right here and there's actually a different face. Yeah, you didn't know Zartan was in the Rebel Army, did you? And for that, the hat pops off the top of the head. Well, yeah, there you go. The face pops forward and it kind of lays inside the quilted material, well, sculpted material on the sides. So when you put the face on, it, there's no seam because <laughs> that forms the seam. Put the other face on and there's many more options because this is kind of a different look to the head. He's got a beard. 
It's, like, it's a different guy. Where'd that other guy go? And this ridge right here goes behind the hat. So as long as the hat is popped on securely, the face is not coming off. The eyes on the bearded face are just a little bit shinier than the one without the beard, but I don't know. I kind of prefer the beard. I may be biased though. But with two faces, the bandana options, the goggles options, you have, well, options. You can get 18 of these at least and have different looks for each of them. Then the face you're not using goes in there. You pop the cover on, nice and secure. It won't fall off. Put that back onto the back. The Hoth Rebel Trooper up to the very top of the ridge of his hat stands at six and a 16th inches tall, which puts him taller than Hoth Luke, but shorter than Hoth Han. That's perfect, that works great. It just seems like a good generic size for a troop builder, an army builder like this. And it looks great with the Star Wars Black Series Wampa and Tauntaun too. And I forgot to mention the holes in the bottom of the feet are to the front. That's to fit the pin up here on the stirrups of the Tauntaun. So if you wanted to swap him onto there, that works too. I will love him and pet him and call him George. So at the end of the day, a decent upgrade and then an awesome new addition to the shelf. The new Lando looks good, and if you missed it the first time around, here's a perfect opportunity to get the most iconic look for him. But for me, even not having the Snowspeeder Luke in hand yet, I think the winner of this way for me is the Hoth Rebel Trooper, or the Hoth Rebel Soldier, whatever you want to call it. It is dynamic, and it makes you want more. I mean, yeah, just right out of the package, it's like, oh, oh yeah, he's gonna be awesome fighting the Empire. But then you have the swappable faces, the different goggle options, the bandana coming up or going down. Yeah, you can get a platoon of these, an army of these, and have them all looking different. And, ooh, and I forgot to mention, if Hasbro steals my fan channel idea of the Hoth Trooper with a brown coat and boots, they can put different faces there and then they're all swappable between each other. They would sell a million of these. Not to even mention that I want all of these same options on a indoor rebel trooper because, ooh, in camouflage with the greens and the different, um, yeah, yeah, give them all to me. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. Right now, Dorkside Toys is running a weekly contest. So if you're interested in free toys, seeing videos early, or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh.